Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to Talk to Connect. It's been a while we didn't uh, have uh, a guest and it's been a while that we didn't have Talk on Talk to Connect, but hey, as usual when we stay we actually get so many uh, more powerful and more um em- empowering people who come to talk to us. It's a new year. Again, let me wish you a happy new year. Let me welcome you again to Talk to Connect. And as usual, our purpose is just to inspire, to empower you, to know that wherever you are right now in your life, there's someone who has been there. And when the guests come here, they share their stories. It's for us to help you see a way out, find your purpose, find a way. And you don't have to feel alone because these guests that are coming here, they've gone through something similar it might be different but their stories can empower you to find your own way and today we are having a very lovely lady um Mel- melvinia i want to welcome her she has such a powerful story she's such a powerful um a powerful woman i want to welcome you and i want to thank you so much for taking your time to be here today thank you thank you uh thank you for inviting me it is a wonderful pleasure and an honor to be on here with you and I'm very excited to be here with you it is I was so excited to finally meet you and speak with you and um my wish and my prayer is that this touches everyone's hearts and helps any and everyone that we possibly can and uh, definitely thank you so much and it's a pleasure to have you here so you have such an amazing story and when I was listening to your story um i was thinking of how many people are out there who have gone through what you've gone through and they are looking and they're wondering what to do so if you'll introduce yourself uh tell us who you are what you do and take us through your journey uh it will be a pleasure because you have such an amazing story if you can share with us your journey from where you started to where you are right now and the challenges and everything that you 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 went through to build this beautiful woman that we are having today here thank you well i am reverend coach or coach reverend <laughs> melvina ford i am a life coach a holistic counselor and also a cognitive behavioral therapy specialist i'll say i also practice reiki and meditation therapy Uh, art therapy and if i add any more things onto my curriculum it'll be a bit overwhelming but so far this is pretty much basically the scope of what it is i do and the reason i chose this arena number 1 one, one of my um tag lines is for the heart of a woman and i believe that my fight literally is for the voice of a woman to come out of the shadows out of that place of being told to be quiet um we've all grown up in a place and time where our ancestors grandparents parents you know even may have told us to keep things in and under not to talk about them swallow it but and and they did it for the sake of the family to keep the family structure together but what we seem to not realize is it also damaged the children The, the the siblings whoever you know endured whatever situations that we decided to sweep under the cover so my heart goes out to being able to have that voice cuz i remember as a child i wasn't able to speak my mind not in a um disrespectful manner but you know there are these things i wasn't able to say and um coming from a childhood where i lost my mom at 3 my dad raised me the best he could um my mother growing up I started to understand some things that my mother went through that a lot of um that my siblings didn't even pretty much speak on too much but my grandmother kind of gave me a little bit of information about it and I never forgot those things so my prayer was always to understand what it was that my mother went through so I try to just take those pieces and re- try to understand who I am the patterns that I went through and some of the things that she told me and you know I can only thing I can think of is she dealt with her own brand of depression and the point where she dealt with abuse she didn't want she didn't have her voice you know even though she was a tough woman there were points in her life where she did not have that strength to be the person that she wanted to be you know and um I'm thankful for her 
her strength because she did when she did leave when it was her time to transition she left me with a strong person who was my dad who raised me eventually he passed away after i graduated high school during this time of growing up with my dad even though he was my strength you know he couldn't protect me with everything i dealt with bullying i dealt with molestation i dealt with a lot of things even through adulthood you know which ended up putting me in a situation to where i was in bad relationships you know um that i had no business being in but when you're lost in that place and you're looking for love attention or something somewhere in your mind all you have to do is hear those certain words i love you i care about you you're important and not realize that a lot of people will say those things be not because they're just trying to get over on you but because they're hurt as well they're going through their own little cycle of pain trauma whatever and some people link up like that and then things happen so it was a spiraling situation for me situation i was in the last one that put me in the psych ward it was a married person and i was completely lost and like i said i went through a 20 year healing process after that because that was the camel literally that broke the straws the straw that broke the camel's back because i had to really stop and look at my life and the patterns that were going on within my life because it was not only hurting others but i was hurting myself and i had to stop and go why and that process began with understanding a lot of the choices that i made growing up um the things that happened to me growing up pain apologies i've had to make forgiveness i had to give and to some people unknowing literally um going back to that childhood and rehearsing all those things i had to go through a healing process and forgive myself and i had to remember that i am not that person anymore i'm not that young girl anymore it's okay to release her it's okay to let her go It's okay to hug on her and love on her. And that's a pattern that we all have to go through as adults in life with any situation. But it's even more so when you have not let go or don't even know you have to let go of those traumas from the past because if you don't it's a repetitive pattern and it keeps happening. And the one question that a lot of us have is why do I keep having this happen to me over and over again? And some of these things happen from a trauma that we don't even realize our parents went through as when they were, you know, adults or a young adults, but when they're carrying a child, one thing a mother does not understand or some don't understand is whatever traumas you're having as you're carrying that child, that trauma carries into that child. Mm-hmm. And that child is if you don't fix it, that child is taking on what you just didn't fix. and now they're taking it on and it carries on in their life and if they don't see it guess what happens that next child happens it is a cycle it's an ongoing cycle it's not that you're not that you don't care it's not that you don't want your child to go it's not that you want your child to go through these things we don't even realize the patterns and we all the one thing that i noticed and i was thinking about it today is we're always saying well yeah i get this from my mom and i get this from my dad and you know we sometimes we wear those things as badges No baby, we should not do that because that's nothing to be proud of. That should be something that we look and say, "Okay, wait a minute. Something has to stop here because when we heal, we're heal- healing the trauma of the past ancestors and we're stopping it from going any further." Mm-hmm. So, for me, the heart of a woman is important because for so many women even today, we do not have a voice. we do not have the choice you know especially in a lot of other countries outside of the US you know but even in the US most people think that US is grand and it's all no 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 there are women today in the US who go who are dealing with abuse neglect for whatever reasons that the trauma has not been healed in their life a lot of women have grown up without a parent or a father figure to give them that strength to confirm them or affirm them. And when that happens, we make the wrong choices just because we want the same thing that everyone wants in the world, love. And we pick make the wrong choices to get them. So that's my fight. That's my fight for women, that's my fight for my mom, my grandmother, 
you know, both of them. Um, I care too much and I just feel like it gets, I got to the point where I got, I stopped being scared of what other people would think. You know, it's like, okay, you're afraid of what they're going to think about you. Okay, well, if they're that intimidated, then that's not the person that I need to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't even matter to me because their journey and my journey is two separate journeys. So whatever they're supposed to be doing is not my concern. My concern is for the voice of the women who need to hear what I have to say and to give them the empowerment that I didn't get. Thank you so much. That's that, that's really powerful, you know. And I, I, I really want to agree with you. I think when I was, I come from Africa and there's this notion that if there's, there is worst thing that are happening in Africa more than anywhere else, like in America and maybe mm-hmm. open in America is more free and they don't go through uh, the pain or abuse or, 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 or being uh, ignored or neglected because you're in Africa. But when you talk about this is like, it makes more sense to understand. It doesn't matter where you are. Things happen whether you're in Africa or in America. It's just to find a way to change the situation and finding people like you who wants to empower women, that's very powerful. So I'm listening to your story and and I know when we talk about you have to forgive, you have to, to let go. I think forgiveness for me, it's one of the hardest thing that people go through and it's it's people feel like forgiving is is actually empowering the person who maybe hurt you or it's making them feel better but for me from experience i know forgiveness is for myself so i want to understand that process you know because forgiveness is a process a process where you have to do at one two three so what is the process you can say someone can go through to accept forgiveness that I can forgive and not feel like uh, I'm being weak because I'm forgiving someone for whatever things that they did to me. Okay, so I can give you an example of something, um, my first real deep forgiveness uh, process, uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Um, It was when I was um, coming out of the bad relationship that I was in with the married person. And I was, um, at the time I was attending church And I remember this one particular evening, the minister came across the pulpit. (laughs) I laugh at it now, but it was the most intense moment of my life. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, I'm dealing with my hurt, that person was dealing with their hurt. You know, I can talk about it now in a place of complete healing and understanding from both sides. But then the minister was talking at that point the minister was talking about forgiveness and he was saying that you need to forgive that person in order to move on. And everything in my whole soul screamed. I was quiet, but inside me, I felt like I was breaking into a million pieces and I was literally talking in my head, why do I have to forgive this person? He did this to me and blah, blah, blah. You know, it was, I placed it all on him and anger came up out of me and tears came up out of me and you know, no one really knew what I was saying, but it was, uh, this conversation was going on in my head, but you, you did see the tears, you know, but it took me 20 years because 10 years after that, this person came to me in an inbox and apologized in the only way they knew how. And at the time I needed to hear certain words and I was, I didn't realize that I had still, I was still in that place of unforgiveness. And I was still angry. And it literally was like when that person came to me, I was like, um, okay. You know, I became to get, I got really, I want to say religious, if you want to, you know, put it that way, (laughs) really dignified, like, oh, I'm fine. You know, like, "Mm, I'm okay. I'm good, you know. And later on that evening, that, that anger came back up again. And I remember screaming and yelling to the top of my lungs. And I cried out to God, you know, help me with this. I really wanted to be free. Mind you, another 10 years went by before that finally I was broke free because what it was, and I'll tell you what the key of it was. When you are unforgiving, it affects you mentally, physically, and spiritually. You can't 
operate in the way that you need to to even even as a human being toward another human being because you'll base that one situation or you'll base every other situation off that happens in your life off of that one situation and they had nothing to do with it my it it began to affect my mind it began to affect my health you know i'm having chest pains i'm taking blood pressure pills um everything is everyone else's fault <laughs> but we forget that even if it somehow we took a part in it even if it was an innocent part we still played a part in it cuz somehow we connected with them on some level mm-hmm. not saying that it was a bad thing not saying it was a good thing it was just it was an experience when we look at anything that happens in our life as an experience of growth and say this was supposed to happen for my good. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not saying don't be angry. I'm not saying don't be upset. Own up to that emotion. Feel it. Don't block it. Don't push it down. Don't hold it in. Get it out. Because holding it in just makes it worse. Mm-hmm. It makes it so much worse. And it you shorten your life because whoever you're upset at they're living they've moved on they've gone on and you're having these middle of the night wake ups at 2 o'clock in the morning remember the whole conversation or the whole incident and you're playing it over again and you're wishing you had said this or you wish you had cursed them out or you wish you had did anything mm-hmm. but what you did do at the time mm-hmm. eventually you you like I'm tired of, I don't want to wake up in my life for this anymore I want to sleep I want peace mm-hmm. I I don't want this I'm done you know you get to that breaking point i'm over it yes. but at the same time you remember all of a sudden we're all a part of the same creator mm-hmm. and if i'm hurting they're hurting mm-hmm. somewhere along the lines we get to that point and we're like you know what we're all a part of this whole situation it takes a journey it takes you stepping out of it and looking at the whole perspective of it to give you peace. Seriously. That that's that's really powerful. You know, I think one thing that I learned about forgiveness is it's allowing yourself to take ownership. You know, like coming out of that victim mode and saying as you said, I'm part of this problem. What can I do? What am I doing right now that I can change so that I can be out of this? Or what can I do so that I can see myself better? So when you take ownership, and I think that's the most powerful thing that happened in my life, is taking ownership of who I am and just understanding what really uh, defines me and what are the things that are holding me back and what is hard making me become. And taking that ownership and saying, you know, I'm not going to be hurt again. I'm going to. be me and i'm going to let go of the baggage because for me i call anybody who you you hold and don't forgive as a baggage that you're carrying with you and i like this this uh this quote hurt people hurt people so if yes. you if you if you don't get over it you're also going to hurt someone so if you don't forgive you're just going to be carrying that pain and you're going to hurt someone else so you need to uh, to understand that we all come from somewhere and there's a reason why someone is doing what they're doing and when you understand that it allows you to 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 connect with yourself and start finding a better place to come from that's very powerful thank you so much so yeah, definitely i'm 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 listening to the things like trauma because when we talk about women and 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 since you're an advocate for women and and women come from different i say from different clothes and they go th- uh, through trauma in different ways especially uh being abused or being uh, uh, uh molested or all these things and we as women actually sit and allow this um traumas that have happened to our lives to define and to define who we are so we belittle ourselves because something happened to me and as you said you have to go back for me you need to walk back and see your past and a lot of people don't want to walk through that journey of oh you know i have to see this is what happened to me for me to become the person that i want so what helped you what helped you just 
open that door of saying, I'm going to see my pain and I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to create the new me because I think that's the process. And you have to go through some things that allow you to actually accept the past mm -hmm. so that you can start creating the, the future. So what are some of the things that you can say actually helped you to allow yourself to open that door, you know, to see that pain and take that learning to become the, the woman that you want to be? Well, for some reason, I used to always, and I still get them, but not as much as I used to get them. I used to always have in the mid middle of the night, literal wake ups. And I would remember those situations as if it was yes, just yesterday. And I would wake up in fits of tears, crying. And um, instead of, it got to the point where, where instead of me wishing I had have said it a certain way to get back at them, you know, because that's the easy way. I had something in me just triggered and was like, okay, when I started to look back, what part did I play? And I learned that by when I started um, studying meta metaphysics. Um, and a holistic healing and everything. And that was a journey in itself. But the one thing I remember in the journey is that we are all part of the creator. Hmm. And once you realize that by you hurting someone else, you're hurting the creator, I started to look at it from a different standpoint. I flipped the mirror around and I'm like, okay, they're me and I'm them. We're not just the creator, but we're a part of it. If we are the all, the, you know, part of the creator or the creator, then I'm you and you're me. So I had to put my own self down, so to say, or put my feelings aside and consider what was it, what could have possibly been that they were going through mm -hmm. in order to be able to look at it from the other side you know, side of the whole spectrum because otherwise you will get completely lost in yourself and it's it shouldn't even be like that, you know. Um, forgiveness for me came like that. I had to, I had to have those moments and they came fast and furious, literally. Um, I had no choice but to look at it because my life around me in the situations that I was in and choices that I was making, I just got tired and I had no choices. Like, okay, we're going to stop this merry around. We're going to get off of it and we're going to figure out where we got on. <laughs> and a lot of studying. Um, I pulled away from a lot of people. A lot of things that I used to do, I got to the point where it wasn't helping my mentality and it wasn't helping my psyche, the thoughts, you know, because if you, you know what they say, birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. And if you continually stand around certain types of people with a certain type of mentality, you can't heal because the only thing they know is, you know, to think bad about another person. You know, it's easy to think the negative than it is the positive. It's easy to just not forgive than it is forgive, mm -hmm. which is true. You know, it's easy to think about yourself than think about the other person, which is not what we're supposed to be doing as human beings anyway, mm -hmm. you know, but when we're the victim, we don't think about what was that person going through. We don't think about what could they could they had have been going through to make them be the person they are. And that's another thing that I had to do. I had to think about what could possibly be going through them. Mm -hmm to cause them to be the person that they are or make them make the choices that they did. Mm -hmm. And just because they're who they are, it doesn't mean I have to continually take it mm -hmm. or put myself in that position to be treated like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a lot of different avenues to look at when you're dealing with forgiveness and understanding other people. You have to, in order, I believe in order to understand yourself or Put it like this in order to understand other people you have to understand yourself that is very very true i think uh, change begins with you the moment you change everything around you changes 
you change and you start seeing things happening differently and you start wondering and you start seeing a positivity so everything begins with you you cannot expect things to happen if you're not becoming or changing to become uh, to have those things that you want in life mm-hmm. so you and for this uh for me i know it's a very sensitive topic to a lot of people it's a, it's it's like some people for them it's even a taboo to talk about it because they don't want to be um to be you know to be to be left out in the community or they don't want people to 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 um talk about them or it's the shame i don't want people to understand that i'm going through this so you went through a point where you you decided okay it's time enough is enough i'm going to i'm going to take my life and i'm going to i don't want to live anymore and through this stress and everything and i know there's a lot of women who go through this not even women even men who go through this and they don't they don't know how to um to find help or because of the shame they are hiding and they're not even talking so how can you advise someone who's going through mental health who's feeling suicidal who's feeling so depressed is going through anxiety how can they have help how can they help themselves since you also talk about cognitive behavior things that they can do uh, in the process so that they can heal so that they can they can feel it's okay it's a situation i'm in and i don't have to be ashamed because i have a mental health health problem i i am a, i'm a person like everybody else who's going through challenge so what are some advice you can give to people who are going through these challenges of mental health Wow, um that's a good question. That's a really good question. Because if, um as initially I didn't feel like I had anyone to help me. Mm-hmm. And that's that's legitimate. You know, based on what I've dealt with when I finally when I did go into the psych ward um from attempting suicide twice. Um for me, I knew that there was more to the life after I went to the dark. even in the midst of the darkness I still questioned there's got to be more to this yeah what I am going to say is take deep breaths take your time um find someone that you really can talk to because everyone is not going to understand and the one thing that really gets under my skin are people who say and those these are the people I'm just going to say they don't understand so you probably should not tell everyone because they'll put you down more than they'll try to help you and those are the people that say how could you do this how could you leave so and so behind how could you do this you're being selfish never feel that way when you're in that place because I'm going to be really honest at this point yes we are being selfish because at that point in depression and suicidal thoughts and you're there you're lo- you're not thinking about anyone else and I'm going to be really honest with you you shouldn't be mm-hmm. even if you have kids you probably it's not and I had a son my son was 7 years old trust me and no parent ever thinks about leaving their child but when you have so much trauma that is to the point where it's at explosion you have no control over it you're not trying to leave your child you're trying to get a grasp on life and everyone thinks it's this simple quick fix to go to the doctor and take medication that's not always the case because they can give you the medication it'll mask you but it's not going to fix the healing trauma find someone that will help you dig deep and will hold you through those hold you accountable but help you through those points when you feel like screaming okay what's the trigger why am i feeling this way what caused the trigger what do we need to address okay then we start this is what i do with my clients what are the why questions why do i feel this way Okay, you answer that question. Okay, now why is that? Until you find out the beginning of it. Ask those why questions, but make sure you're talking to someone who really wants to help you. Because if someone comes to you and tell you you're being selfish and they go to the doctor, that's not always the the quick fix. It's not. Because for me, I knew how to hide my depression really really well. Mm-hmm. And 
the one thing some people do not understand about a person who is depressed heavily, sleeping a lot like I was, losing weight, um, is when you're ready to take your life, you're not going to tell anyone. You're not going to know. So the day that I took pills, or both those days that I decided to take pills, no one knew until it was after the fact. The second time, well, actually the first time I did it, I reached out to someone, but they didn't know where I was when I reached out to them. So they called the police to find me at my apartment. I wasn't there. So if I really wanted to go, there, there was nothing anyone could do because they didn't know where I was. Mm -hmm. The second time, I was actually at home and my son found me, but I was still coherent. So he went and got help. It's a hard place to be. There is no quick fix to someone who's depressed. It's a painful place to be in. It's unexplainable. It's dark. And you just pray that you can help that person through to a point where they can breathe through it and say, okay, I can find my way through it. Because being a person that has gone that path, you just don't know. You can do the best you can and pray. So I pray for a lot of mothers who have lost their sons, their children, family members to this. It's a painful, dark place to be in and you never want to be there. Only thing you can do is pray them through, hope to God that you can help them. Yes, be there for them as much as you can, but in a positive fashion and pray. Because, And then on the other spectrum of that, sometimes it is a chemical imbalance. So sometimes medication will help you to level off what that anxiety is. You know, I have had a client that had to do that um, and they're better for it. It just depends. Each person is so different. With me, it looked like a chemical imbalance. It probably was, but at the same time, I had enough strength left inside of me to want to try to fight. Mm -hmm. But every situation is different. I hate to put it like that. I hate to say that there should be a fix for everybody, but there isn't. But most definitely be there for someone, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that's that's very, very powerful. Uh, let me welcome Catherine and Divina. Thank you for being here. Hello, Catherine. How are you? And uh, Divina, thank you for your comment. Um, I think that's a very powerful way of, of, of explaining it. And and if you're listening and you're going through this, this, uh, this problem or you're suffering from depression, just understand that there's so many people out there who are willing to help. You just have to find the right people, the right community, and never feel ashamed of what you're going through. So the next question I want to ask is how, because some people don't even know that they're going through, you know, it's an emotion that is happening. It's a feeling that you have. And and sometimes, we, you, you you know, we have this facade of, you know, I'm feeling this, but I'm going to control. I don't want people to, to see this part of me. It's like, so what are some of the signs? Because some people don't even know that they're going through depression and i'm, I'm going to take any much most women go through things and they go through depression but they don't even understand that they're going through depression they just find it all because maybe i'm in an abused relationship this is why i'm having these funny emotions and so how can you help someone to identify some of the signs just to know that the depression is really hitting them or they are getting into anxiety or they, uh -huh. they, they, they're almost going to the suicidal side and starting, uh, they can they can commit suicide because it's always good for people to understand the signs that they're having so that they can start finding help because uh -huh. a lot of people don't talk about it and that's the problem. You, they never share what they feel, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. because we come from places where you don't have to be vulnerable, vulnerability is making you be weak. So you're supposed to be strong and you have this facade of showing that you're confident and confident and strong and all of that. For me, <laughs> I did show that strong side, but I also had situations that happened with me oh. initially. Um, for me, I second guessed myself a lot. I started to question my thought process I began to shrink away from friends and family that I would normally hang out with. 
you know, especially in that one moment in time in my life. Um, it was crazy. I lost weight. My appetite was minimum. I remember, I can remember at one point, the only thing I ate was cereal, mm -hmm. literally just cereal, one type of cereal and it was Cocoa Puffs. I have no idea why, but at that point in my time, in my life, I, that's all I ate. That's all I really wanted to eat. That should have been a sign, but it wasn't. I thought I was just having a phase, but um, I went to visit family members and I was visiting family. I hadn't seen in a minute. I slept the whole trip. Went to my grandmother's house, that went on the couch, sleep. Went to my cousin's house on the couch, sleep. Mm -hmm. And when I got back home from the trip, the first thing I did was get in the bed. I went to sleep. You don't talk. You go through the motions of living, but it's like you're not there. You're like in a fog, in a haze. You don't want to talk to people. Thinking just is just out, you know, you don't think unless you have to, mm. you know. You don't even want to hear the TV, mm. literally. It's just, you zone out. You're just going through the motions and I don't even think I even realized it at that point. You know, you, I, I would have to say someone else has to see those things within you and pick up on it and notice that your habits have changed drastically. You know, someone has to be paying attention. But if you've already alienated everyone from around you, then that's even kind of hard. That should be the first sign. If I haven't heard from you in a while, check in on people, you know, because if they're depressed, you're not going to know it. That is, that is amazing. Thank you so much. And I think you know, when we come to the people who are around us, I, I think most of us also like um, ignoring, you know, the signs that, oh, someone is not talking. And, and this is a very good point that you're saying, that the people around us should notice if we are having different kind of behaviors. Maybe you are somebody who was uh, bubbly and all of a sudden you are locking yourself in. This is signs that people should notice if someone is not noticing and, and we try to help them. Um, so I want to to uh, to to ask because I think when we go through all these things that we go through, the one thing that we lack and that is is self love. And we tend to really lose to appreciate who we are, and I think becoming to come and love yourself, no matter what you've gone through, whether it's a big thing, trauma, or it's a just bullying, being bullied in school, or anything that you've gone. through, through in your life that breaks that self-love in you, uh, makes you become always feeling a lesser person. So how can you advise someone? Because I, I, there's a lot of people who have different things and I like to have different ways from different people. How can you raise your self-love? Because I think in the journey of healing, in the journey of, of, of understanding, uh, whatever we are going through, it's the part of it, the bigger part of it is you getting to love yourself, is you getting to accept yourself the way you are. So what are the things you can say that helps you to just come and to that center of saying, okay, I love um, Melvina and I'm, I'm, I'm going to make her a better person. And, and no matter what, I'm going to build myself to become the woman that I want. Oh, that took a lot. <laughs> but... Um... Initially, I'm going to say if you've gone through childhood trauma, you have to remember that you can't change the past, but you can do whatever you need to do for your now. Um, affirmations are always good. Affirmations are very, very powerful. You know, whatever positive thing, things you can find to say about yourself, if you can have to put up post-it notes around you around your home, on your mirror in the bathroom, um, put on positive um, meditations, um, um, video, anything like that, something positive. I would say to find positive music with words, you know, anything empowering. Cause for me, there are music, there's music that I like. And even though it may have a couple of few, you know, choice words in it, but it's very empowering because we have to remember that we're just as important as the next person, mm -hmm. you know, that we all make mistakes and it's okay because it's a learning process. It's not about wrong or right. It's not about good or bad. And that's where we mess up because we put life in such a duality that it's either you're this or you're that, and that's not true. And that's what gives us these, um, is put, puts us in these boxes 
and causes us to be thinking we're not good enough, especially by the way we were, you know, raised. You know, sometimes our parents will say things to us and they don't realize that that has a, an impact on us as adults. You know, my dad didn't think I was this. He told me I was this or my dad wasn't around and my mom, whatever, whoever it was, you have to remember again that they had their own trauma. And sometimes the, re the, the cycle repeats. So you have to remember, I'm not that person. I'm not that person who just said that about me. I'm my own individual person. And you have to find your own strengths. You have to go back and find out what is it that makes me happy? What do I like to do? Me, for myself, I knew I liked to dance. I like to sing. I like to write. I like to act silly. I can get loud at times and boisterous. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to read. I had to find things that made me happy instead of everyone else happy. And that's key because if you're always trying to please everyone else, you will get lost in translation and you'll get hyped up into someone else's life and you forget, okay, well, who am I? Mm -hmm. What am I about? And I think that's when the world kind of gets triggered themselves when they're like, okay, well, they're not paying attention to me anymore. Everyone's on a me, 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 me. You should be on a me, 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 but not in the sense where everybody else has to pay attention to you just like that as well. You know, we all want the center stage. We should be our own center stage, always. Thank you, that's powerful. I think uh, being, being the center stage of yourself allows you to understand yourself better and affirming to yourself. I think most of us, a lot of people want to get affirmation from outside that people say I am so that I can feel good. I think the moment you start affirming to who you are, even if the affirmation don't come from outside, you start finding yourself and start finding the things that you love, as you said, you start finding the ways and the things that define you, your values, your beliefs and your identity. And that's, I think that's the powerful thing that you can have in, in terms of loving yourself when you just get uh, the identity of who you are. Thank you for sharing that. So, uh, so I want you, so I, I, I know there's, there's women who are listening out there and someone wondering or someone still going through what you went through or someone someone is listening out there who needs to just be inspired what advice can you give and I, I'm talking now now I'm going to say if you're talking to a young woman who's growing uh, in any part of the world and she's going because I think the youth somehow suffer a lot in terms of mental health in terms of mm -hmm. self-love because they're struggling to find themselves and all so what advice would you give to a young woman who's going through uh who has gone through trauma who's lost right now she doesn't know what she wants in life who's feeling like life doesn't have a meaning and she's actually feeling like ending her life what is one advice that you can give to this young lady who's out there feeling lost and confused the one thing that I used to tell the young ladies that I used to, um, a program that I used to do for young ladies at the um, church I used to attend years ago is get a journal. Mm -hmm. There are times that, especially as young ladies, that we don't have, we feel that we don't have anyone to talk to and we can't vent the way we want to. This right here is your lifesaver. This is what I used to tell young ladies when they were that angry or that upset. Get it, whatever you do, get it out of you. Don't hold it in here. Put it on here. Put it on here. Get it, get it all out. I don't care how you say it. I don't care how you write it because it's your words and it's just for you to see. It's for you. It's, this is your healing. Get, just get it out. That's number one. Number two, pay attention to who you're around because everyone that says they're your friend is not your friend. And everyone that says they have your best interest does not have your best interest at, at heart. They may want to, but I guarantee you, most of us, we have our own issues to deal with, even though we really want to be there. And I know for a fact that they're not trying not to be there on purpose be your own best friend that's a lonely place to be i'm going to be honest but you know what 
once you're your own best friend, it doesn't hurt anymore when you don't put expectations out there for someone else. Yes. When you let the expectations go, you feel a lot better because they can't disappoint you so much. It's okay to have friends. It's okay to have people you hang out with or associate with, but don't get so lost into them till you lose yourself. And keep this until you're ready to let it go. Mm -hmm. Because once you've healed, once you've written down this information, I guarantee you, you're gonna go back to it and you're gonna reread it one day. And then you're going to get to go back and say, you know what? That's not true about me anymore. I don't feel that way. Whatever it is, this is your healer. It'll help you to go back and look at those things and say, why did I feel that way? Going back to those whys. Why do I feel this way? Why did I feel that way? I've written so many journals about situations and I've now to the point where I don't do it anymore, but I've Everything that I've written, because I know it's over, it's in the past, I've burned it or torn it up and thrown it away because it no longer exists. It's a process. It's not an overnight situation, but it can happen. Take your time. And most of all, if you have to talk to someone, make sure you're talking to someone who really wants to listen and be there as much as they can. But don't hold them to be their 100%. I'm just being honest and real because, you know, when you've gone through it, you understand it, but you don't, you're not so, ju ain't nobody here for me. That's the first thing I always hear from people who are really, you know, no one's here for me. No one's ever here for me. It's not that they really don't want to be. You know, some people are really there for you in silence because that's how, that's the only way they know how. That is, that is really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. And you're talking about a journal and I think writing, um, for me, that has been the most powerful thing I can say because it's like a free arena where you can actually pour yourself everything that you feel without feeling that you're being judged. And it's like you looking yourself from another perspective. It's like you are look, you're writing about you, but it's like some you, you're looking at someone else uh, telling their story and actually you get to really understand what you're really feeling so I think journaling is a very powerful thing and every time you write it's like you're releasing part of that that negativity or part of that yeah. that burden that you're having in you and you're feeling the relief so journaling is a very powerful thing I will thank you for sharing that um, so Ali Omar said I'm a man and I'm listening to yeah this always up it's always up I know that there's so many men who are going through this and <laughs> uh, thank you for sharing that I think this message was is meant for whoever is listening be it a woman be it a man if it can help yes. you find yourself and heal this is the purpose of having this um, this podcast um, I think one thing that you, that you said, and, I, and every time I'm listening to what you're saying, is is having ownership. When you take ownership of who you are, and 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 not having those expectations of people being there, it's not bad to expect people to be there in your life. But when you take the the ownership of me, I'm responsible of who I am becoming, of who I want to be, of what I want to be in life. Then you come out of that box of saying. I'm not going to be anything if people don't allow me. Because when you ask for permission to become something, then you do not, you, you, you don't have the freedom of becoming who you want to become. And I think it comes down to you understanding your values. What are the things that are defining me to become the woman that I want to become or the man that I want to become? And it doesn't matter what you've gone through in life because whatever has happened in your life, whatever challenges that you go, you've gone through in life, does not define who you are and it's a matter of choice it's like you're writing your story every single day every single day you wake up you're writing a chapter of your story and you're choosing the plot you're choosing the characters you're choosing the the words that you want to use and that's when we say for me when i do affirmation in the morning i'm like this is the these are the words that i want to walk with every day in the morning because they're going to define the way my day looks like who i want to have in my circle defines how my 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 growth is going to be so 
as you say, not everybody says who's your friend is your friend, and and you have to understand that you need to find people who really can can understand your identity as a person and not judge as much as judgment doesn't have come from you. So what you're saying, Annie, like that's very powerful sharing with us. So what is the one one sentence can that can define you as as a person? One sentence that defines you. Rise above the ashes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is really powerful. Thank you. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> so we um we have listened a lot to what you're saying, your cognitive behavior. Can you explain a little bit about what is cognitive behavior? Uh, what is, how does it help actually people come out of this journey of, of struggling? And what is it really? Because sometimes it's good for people to understand what we do in a little bit in, a, in depth so that they can um, f- understand how they can find help, how they can reach out, how they can be helped. Okay. So cognitive behavior, if I were to say it in layman terms, it is a mindset of thoughts that you have developed and it can have developed since childhood, like the things that have been put into your mind about how you look, how you act, your personality. You know, like me, for instance, when I was a child, I was told I was hard headed. You know, my dad gave me nicknames such as Crazy Horse and Wooden Head. You know, those are, you know, when you're a kid, you don't, <laughs> you don't understand it. And, you know, growing up, that's exactly what I heard from my older siblings, you know, well, especially my brothers, you know, you don't listen, you're hard headed, you know, and then, you know, it, it toggles into other things. And then you have to go through school and you're told you're too dark skinned or you're this, you know, whatever negative connotations people throw at you and they pile onto each other. So those are the things that you take on, you know, and all of a sudden, even if me being bullied in school, you know, then all of a sudden you start taking on even more, like there must be something wrong with me that this person wants to push me around or beat up on me, you know? So you take that into adulthood. That's what you're thinking. Even though it's 20 years ago, you're still thinking those things. So what you have to do, cognitive behavior is where you change your thought process. You're looking at the situations from what you used to think and you're going, okay, now what's the flip side of that? You know, am I hard headed? No, I have a strong personality. I have leadership capabilities. Um, you know, if someone's talking about your weight, okay, well, I am a very beautiful, shapely woman or whatever it is that, you know, you find the positive spin on at, on that. And sometimes there are ways to do it, whether you do it with art, whether you do it with wordplay, whether you again do it with meditation, because meditation, especially one that's led in by words, um, a guided meditation, um, it helps you to remember and dispel some of those words that were embedded into you mm-hmm. if you're consistently listening to it and puts those positive things it reaffirms you to who you really are mm-hmm. you know and it helps you to remember again that's not who i am that's what someone else's version is of me that's not who i truly am they have depicted a picture of me and that's that's a lie you know so you get to find your own truth your own person, who your own, who you are, you know, and that's what cognitive behavioral therapy is. It helps a person to shift their thinking into a positive realm and get them out of that dark place. Thank you so much. That's really powerful. And I think uh, belief system, your belief system is everything. I, I can say that the moment my belief system changed from what I was having this defining moments in my life of what people say about you, whatever is going to happen in your life. And I think when things happen in your life, you make a story out of the situation and you create a belief system that really defines the way you behave and the thoughts that are running with you. So I, for one thing, I believe that when you change that belief system and start having a system that works for you, you have the the thoughts that are actually giving you the right emotions to help you to create the, the right behavior and get the right results. That's a very powerful thing. So thank you for sharing that. And I think for anyone who's listening, if there's one thing that you need to 
uh, check into is what are those defining moments in my life that made me have certain beliefs that define my 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 future right now maybe the belief that i'm not beautiful what is, where is it coming from what was it said before that gave me that impression that i am not and how can i change it and become and, and feel confident about myself that's really powerful so what can you if people want to reach you and if you can explain a little bit um uh how people can reach you and uh, if people want to connect with you maybe somebody's i know someone is listening and there's a lot of people who are going through challenges mental health belief system uh, name them we need to change we need to grow and with especially with the corona and what has happened there's a lot of people who have just lost their confidence so how can people reach you well I am here on Facebook and under, you can reach me at Coach Melvina, spelled C-O-A-C-H-M-E-L-V-I-N-I-A, last name Ford, Mm -hmm. F-O-R-D. My business name is called Rebirth Holistic Healing on Facebook as well. Um, Instagram, Rebirth Holistic Healing. Twitter, it's at RebirthMen11, which is R E. B I R T H M I N 1 1. That's on Twitter. Um, if you want to email me, you can reach me at Rebirth Dimension, R E B I R T H D I M E N S I O N at gmail.com. You can reach me on any one of those platforms, inbox me, message me, email me, and we can set up a time and chat. Um, I do virtual train, uh, virtual sessions. It's not a problem. Um, just to help anyone else, anyone out, because you just never know, you know, someone may be on their last bit of just hope Mm -hmm. and just need someone to just listen, not help them figure it out. But sometimes they need to get it out in order to even try to even think about how to figure it out. So thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, for whoever's listening, if you, there's a lot of people, if you're going through any of these challenges, trauma, uh, you're going through any kind of heart that makes you feel that you're going to hurt yourself or you're having stress or you're going through mental health. There's a lot of people out here who are, are willing to help you just reach out and find help, find the right people who can help you. And Thank you so much, Melvin, for being here today. I believe this this has been very informative even for me. There's a lot of things I've learned about, especially about mental health. Um, uh, there's a lot of things that we as, as human beings, sometimes we don't talk about because of, of, of society and, and, and a lot of things. And being open like this is allowing someone to see there's a possibility to 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 get better to become better to grow so thank you so much for sharing this if you are going through anything um especially mental health and you need help please you can reach out to uh to melvin i have catherine here catherine also she's working with people who are going through trauma so there's so many people around who can just help you to just um uh, go through come out of that uh that situation so i want to thank you so much for being here uh, as again, Talk to Connect is not just a place where we talk, but it's a place where we help others to see there's a better future, there's possibilities. You can become who you want to become. And thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Swale. Thank you so much, Melvin, for being here. And uh, I want to welcome you. We're going to have more, more talks soon since we haven't been having a lot of guests, but we're going to be having more guests coming with more information and 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 um, empowering each other. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you.